Hello. I'm Dr. Tony Malioko, the Cancer Informant. The Cancer Informant is dedicated to informing cancer patients and loved ones about various aspects of cancer care and diagnosis and treatment. Today's topic is going to be benign breast diseases. Diseases of the breast are quite common and breast cancer is one of the commonest cancers. I'm going to have two podcasts about breast diseases. One will be focused on benign conditions and the other on malignant conditions of the breast. Today, we'll start with the benign conditions. The breast can be afflicted with many different medical conditions. One is inflammation. Mastitis of the breast is quite common, particularly during breastfeeding. Um, mastitis can present as reddening of the breast or as lumps. It's easily treated with antibiotics and other measures. However, sometimes it can mimic cancer and this can cause problems. Cancers that arise during pregnancy and lactation can be particularly troublesome and aggressive. So it's important to distinguish whether a condition of the breast is in fact benign or malignant. Now other conditions of the breast are, are lumps that can arise in the breast. And the breast is prone to benign tumors and also to cysts. On the monthly cycle, a breast may become painful or lumpy. This may go away with the next cycle. Cyclical changes in the breast are most often benign. There are a variety of benign tumors that can afflict the breast. One is fibroadenoma. A fibroadenoma is essentially a benign proliferation of a tumor that's composed of stromal elements of the breast, these are the fibroblasts and the glandular elements, that become organized in a, a round way that the tumor is expansile and grows and produces a rubbery mat mass or lump in the breast. You can feel these, they're mobile, they're usually non-painful but sometimes they can be tender and they're treated by surgical removal. Generally, before a surgery is considered, um, certain diagnostic procedures may be undertaken. These include imaging studies with things like ultrasound or uh, MRI analysis of the breast, or there may be a biopsy done where a needle can be placed into the lesion and the cells removed to be examined by a pathologist. As I said, the vast majority of fibroadenomas are completely benign. We don't really understand why they grow. They may be due to some sort of hormonal imbalance. Interestingly, at a scientific level, when you look at the genetic makeup of these tumors, you occasionally do find alterations in the DNA that make these benign tumors. The difference between a benign tumor and a malignant tumor is a benign tumor basically does not invade the surrounding tissue. It grows in an expansile way and is very round and rubbery. A malignant tumor will grow more like a spider or a crab where it places fingers of invasive growth into the surrounding tissue. A malignant tumor can also spread to other parts of the body. <clears throat> a benign tumor very, very rarely converts into a malignant tumor. There are some unusual fibroadenomas that can become extremely large and sometimes can undergo a type of malignant conversion. These are called phyloides tumors and they're extremely rare. Now there are other kinds of benign conditions in the breast. Um, a condition called fibrocystic breast disease is a very, very common condition where many women develop this condition. This can produce lumps and painful breasts the lumps will um, grow and recede over the course of the menstrual cycle. Fibrocystic breast disease can also appear as microcalcifications on mammograms and can lead to diagnostic procedures such as biopsies. What is fibrocystic breast disease? Well, when you look down the microscope at tissue from a breast, 
there's really a few types of tissue that are present in a normal breast. The first is the fatty tissue. So fatty tissues are most often benign or always benign. There's fibrous tissues and then there's the glandular tissues. It may surprise you to know that the glandular tissue is actually a minority part of the tissue in a normal breast. It's present in a minimal amount. However, in fibrocystic breast disease, you often see some proliferation of the fibrous tissue and formation of cysts that fill with clear watery fluid. In addition, you may find microcalcifications. These are tiny calcifications that form in the glandular tissue or around the glandular tissue. And these show up on x-rays, mammograms, and they may be cause for concern. This leads to the surgical excision of these lesions. Sometimes the fibrocystic disease is quite complex and it can actually trick a pathologist into thinking it might be a malignancy. This is where an expert review can be very helpful to, to show that the lesion is in fact benign. Now there's a type of hyperplasia called atypical ductal hyperplasia that is a little more worrisome. Atypical hyperplasia is a type of lesion or a type of growth within the breast that's halfway between being benign and being malignant. Breasts that have atypical hyperplasia may actually be hiding malignancy elsewhere in the breast. So the diagnosis of atypical hyperplasia can be a warning sign for a surgeon that additional breast biopsy should be considered to determine if there is any evidence of malignancy elsewhere. Another type of condition that can affect the breast is traumatic injury. So if there is uh, an injury of the breast, it can lead to fat necrosis. Fat necrosis is where the fatty tissue actually becomes devascularized and dies, and then an inflammatory condition occurs, producing a lump. Fat necrosis uh, can mimic a cancer and again can lead to a biopsy where a pathologist, when they examine this tissue, will determine that it's actually benign. Another condition that's important to be aware of in breast is in women that have had surgical implants. So breast implants can be saline or silicon or other materials. In very rare cases, it's been observed that some women may actually develop malignancy around the implant. So there is this slight risk of malignancy that can occur. The, the, the type of malignancy is actually a very rare type of lymphoma, often something called an ALK positive lymphoma. So this is an unusual and complicated finding in, in a woman who has an implant. Moving on, um, there are a few other benign conditions. So a woman may present with nipple discharge. The discharge could be clear or it could be bloody. A discharge from the nipple may indicate that there's an underlying condition that could be something called a benign papilloma. Sometimes this can be palpated and again it may lead to a surgical removal where the benign papilloma can be diagnosed and uh, properly managed with simple removal. In other conditions it can be hard to understand why there is a discharge and this may indicate there's some type of hormonal imbalance in the patient. The patient can also develop other types of lesions, uh, dermatitis of the skin and inflammation of the skin that may be unrelated to the breast tissue below. There is one type of lesion though called Paget's disease of the nipple. In this disease, the nipple becomes inflamed and red and it's a warning sign that there could be an underlying cancer, a ductal carcinoma in situ, or there might just be an underlying benign reactive or inflammatory condition. So again, when there is an unusual change in the breast, such as an uh, inflammation of the nipple, a lump, or a discharge, it's prudent to have a proper examination, imaging study, and potentially a biopsy. So these are the main uh, benign lesions that affect the breast. So in summary, the benign lesions can present as, first of all, lumps. These can include things like benign fibroadenoma or fibrocystic disease of the breast. 
They can present as an abnormal mammographic finding, uh, such as microcalcifications. And again, these are most often benign proliferative breast disease. Now, if there is proliferative breast disease that is atypical, that is a warning sign. And particularly if the woman is from a family that has multiple members with breast cancer, this could be a warning that this woman is at particular risk of developing breast cancer in the future and prophylactic mastectomy might be considered. There can also be discharges from the breast nipple that can uh, indicate an underlying either benign or malignant condition in the nipple ducts. And there can also be inflammations of the surface of the skin, a dermatitis or a um, inflammation eczema-like uh, inflammation of the nipple that can also indicate underlying inflammatory conditions or a more serious condition such as Paget's disease, which is a type of ductal carcinoma in situ. Thank you for listening to today's podcast about benign conditions of the breast. In a future podcast, I'll talk about breast malignancy and the, the various types of malignancy. Thank you for tuning in, and I look forward to connecting with you on future podcasts. Please visit our website and leave any comments or questions for us to address in future episodes. Have a great day. Thank you.